did a, some quick remarks in this amazing exhibit of Michael Friedman's photographs downstairs. So for those folks, this may be a little repetitious. Um, but um, I'm Greg Harris, and I'm uh, privileged to be the present CEO of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And uh, we, um, our mission is to engage, teach, and inspire through the power of rock and roll. Engage, teach, and inspire through the power of rock and roll. And you know, there are, there's so many ways to do that, but to do it with an amazing exhibit of these photographs of these iconic artists really in their element 50 years ago, and then they have a, the story that these photos were, were missing and lost for 45 years, rediscovered, now being shared with the world, and to have the person that shot the photos be able to be here tonight and tell us the story of those photos. Uh, that's a great way to engage, teach, and inspire through the power of rock and roll. Um, our museum has been open for 24 years now. 13 million visitors have come here and enjoyed this place. Um, it's always been a terrific museum. And we've kind of looked at it in the last couple years and, and made some changes. You can now play instruments in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on our second floor. Talk about engaging, teaching, and inspiring. Um, this summer we did 100 days of live music on our plaza at this museum. And so, um, you know, all of this is just to bring this history alive. It's to make sure that um, we're always connecting with each other. Um, the um, rock and roll is something that connects all of us in a really powerful way. And, and that's sort of the magic of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, this photo collection, Michael, have a Cleveland connection. Some of you may know the name uh, Bob Broadbent. Bob Broadbent ran Higley's Department Stores. He raised the money to get this museum built. So he chaired the campaign to get this thing built about 30 years ago. He was beating the bushes with George Voinovich, with Albert Ratner, with all of our founders. Well. His son is friends with Michael. And his son heard about these photos and connected us with Michael uh, a good two years ago. And one thing led to another. And now we are so honored that we can actually <coughs> exhibit these photos here at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and share them with the public. Um, we're honored that Michael and his, his family and extended family made the trip out here to be with all of us tonight. Um, with um, nights like this, we're reminded that there are connections for all of us, and they are family connections. They're also the, the connections for people that love the same things that we loved. There was a time when you would flip through somebody's record collection and see records and go, yeah, yeah, I get it. Um, I'm with them. And uh, in this day and age, there's so many things that divide us. It's great to be in a place where things connect us. So I'm really honored that you're here tonight, and uh, please join me in welcoming um, our head of, of Programming and visitor engagement, John Gerke to tell you what's happening here. And then we're going to bring up Michael and our curator, uh, Karen Herman. Before I turn it over to John, thank you to the curatorial staff. Uh, I think Nawaka was one of the leads on this. Karen and her team, Joe. They deliver throughout this entire museum. And if you haven't seen the photo exhibit yet, please check it out. And make sure you see, when I walked in, Janis Joplin was playing. Janis Joplin's guitar is sitting there. She didn't play many guitars, but she played that one. Uh, thanks for being here. Come on, John.